Hello everybody, welcome back to another NASCAR diecast review and today we're going to be reviewing the very first diecast for this team. This team has never gotten a diecast made before until now. The very first diecast for this driver to come back to the Cup Series since he retired and the very first diecast for this number in quite some years. So with that in mind, the diecast that I'm talking about is on Greg Biffles, 2022 Grambling State University, number 44, get this, for NY Racing, as known as New York Racing, that he ran at the Daytona 500. This is freaking awesome. Nobody expected the Biff, the Biff to come back to the Cup Series. Because after he retired after Homestead 2016, yes, he made a couple truck starts since then. In 2019, the race he won at Texas with KBM. And he made one one-off start as well. Just like he did in 2019 and 2020 with GMS Racing. Didn't do really well at the Darlington race, unfortunately. But Greg Biffle has returned to the Cup Series last year. And this car looks freaking fantastic. And this was the very first race NY Racing also has came back. Since um, they supposedly not shut down. But their last race was all the way back in 2018, you know. Filling in the gaps with BK Racing, helping them out for the rest of that season before they shut down and eventually ceased to Front Row Motorsports and um, what was the other team? And the bank, of course. So, yeah. I forgot there was another team, wasn't there? I don't know, but NY Racing came back and that is just really cool for last year. Because we need more small teams in NASCAR, and with Greg Biffle, this makes a really must-need die cast. And it took me a while to get this car, but I was like, hey, I'm just going to get it now before it gets really, really rare. And I made the best choice possible. So, let's go over the detail on the box. You got Next Gen 2022 season, Greg Biffle's name right there. You got the NASCAR Cup Series logo right there. Go to the... Right here, you got uh, Greg Biffle, number 44, Grambling State University, 2022 Camaro ZL1, limited edition. And right here, the barcode, I believe, is um, C442265 6SUGB. You got the NASCAR logo right there. You got the Action Racing Collectibles logo right there. You got Lionel Racing, the official diecast of NASCAR. You go up, up, you go back here, you got the, you know, the barcode, if you want to scan it, you got the NASCAR official sticker right there, which I think you can also barcode that, you got, you know, it, the numbers right there you can do it with, and right here you got www.lionelracing.com, and on the bottom of the car you have your copyright and such, on the bottom, let's get this die cast rolling out of the box, let's go. Also forgot to mention out, it says 164 scale right here. So yeah, the car is out of the box as you can see. And now let's take a look at this. Holy crap. That, this looks freaking fantastic. So cool to see Greg Biffle come back at 52 years old. The last time before he, he uh, raced in 2022... You saw of him in the Cup Series was all the way back in the 2016 Homestead Miami finale. The same race where, you know, Carl Edwards made his final start and crashed out, unfortunately. Hope he comes back. Also, the final start for Brian Scott. Um, and I guess Casey Mears, but he did make some starts the next following year. And then a one-off start for Jermaine Racing coming back to them in 2019. But he got into a crash with Paul Menard. Not Paul Menard. Paul, I can't speak. Um, Parker Kligerman. Also, I remember back in 2019 that there was rumors about the Greg Biffle returning. And unfortunately, that didn't come true. But just three years later, he came back. How about that? Now, Greg Biffle, uh, before we get into the, you know, the, the logos and stuff. Greg Biffle, you know, um, he made total five starts last year. He made the Daytona 500. He raced... Uh, the spring Talladega race, um, he raced at the spring Atlanta race, and he raced at Las Vegas. I forgot the other track he raced at, but he raced at total five tracks, and unfortunately, engine or trouble troubles with his team, like with like 
parts of the car kept them from finishing races. But however, in the spring Atlanta race, Greg Biffle would get the team their 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 first top twenty since the twenty fifteen Daytona five hundred. So with a twentieth and nineteenth place finish, plus he even ran in the top ten at one point. I have a good memory. That's how I remember that. So let's get on to the car itself. You got the Chevrolet Bowtie, Biffle's name right there. You got the G for Grambling. State University, it looks like a, a NFL logo from what I've seen. I don't follow, follow football, so other than the Super Bowl, so I'm not 100% sure. Correct me if I'm wrong, but some people are saying it looks like the Green State Packers or something. Uh, Atlanta, I don't know. Green State Packers? Who knows? But I love how in the background you got like the stripes, like, you know, camouflage stripes with like yellow behind the logo. That looks really cool. You got the hood vents right there. You got the Chevrolet bow tie right there, the ZL1. You got more of that stuff coming down the grill and onto the splitter. Looks really nice. Got the beautiful headlights. You got Sunoco. You got number 44, NY Racing right there. Looks really, really sharp. You got Goodyear, NASCAR Cup Series number 44. You got Greg Biffle's signature up there on the name rail. I love how in the background you got more of this, but it's in a, but it's in gray. That looks freaking awesome. You got what does that say? Um, looks like a stick, but you got the Puma logo. That looks really sharp and unique. At the same time, you got uh, like I said, Grand Lake State University. You got up on the B pillar, NY Racing, um, Chevrolet. I can't tell what those two logos say right there, but you got Graham Education dot Graham dot Education H free or H C H E C U um League Pass Plus. This is what it says you got Elastafa. I don't know. I don't know what that logo says right back there, but you got the American Ethanol Ring, and you see that the more that transition comes back to here, and I love how those wheels are silver. looks really, really sharp. Works really well on the Noah Gregson and Wendy's car, that's for sure. You go to the other side of the car, basically the same thing right here. Just love this paint scheme. It looks really nice. You go to the back end of the car. You got the Chevrolet bow tie, the... um. Uh, the tail lights right there. I'm gonna miss. I'm gonna miss the Camaro. Looks really. These cars look really sharp. You got we are, we are Grambling right there. You got the Grambling State University logo right there. You got number 44, the Camaro. You got the ZL1 logo right there. You got the spoiler pivots, and then back here you got. I don't know what that is. I guess um, if I can guess correctly, they're like um, I don't know. Part of the axle, I don't know, maybe, who knows. Then you go to the back end of the car, you said Grambling State University again, you got Biffle's name, and you got Grambling State University once again. And if you want to see inside the car, before we get to there, you got, then you got the number 44 on the, on the roof, and you got more of the gray stripes, like the yellowish orange stripes right there, it looks really, really sharp. If you want to take a look inside the car, you can. Really, really sharp car and detail to this beauty. And if you want to see on the undercarriage, it says 2022 Camaro ZL1. Um, used under license. Lana Racing. Made in China. And, the, and it's an EL. It says free for 222 EL. And that's basically your view right there. So... Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't want to make any speculations, but the owner of NY Racing, or as known as, you know, New York Racing, John Cohn, Conan, is a con artist. Because um, this team keeps popping up every once in a while. And before we get into this kind of stuff, where I just speculate, this team used to be called Team Extreme. Yeah, that, yeah, that Team Extreme. If you remember the whole situation back in, like, 2015... 
the same year where Reed Sorensen got them their top 15 finish, their best career finish of 13th after he crashed his one and only car in the qualifying practice, which I think was stupid at the time, but somehow they got in the show with another car. They got a great finish. They were set to make the race. They had all the assets and and parts for the car for the, I think the 2015 Atlanta race, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know. It's been so long. I think it was for Atlanta. They had Travis Qualful as their driver, but some idiot stole their trailer, stole all their stuff, and it was found in, um, in you know, a ditch on on the side of the road in, in Georgia, I believe. And so, so, and a fan found the car just scattered in, in the down on the ditch in the ditch, and that really sucks for a team like that. It's a small team, like a very really small team. That team just a few years prior opened up the shop. And they had drivers such as, you know, David Rudiman making one star. J.J. Yaley, Scott Riggs back in the day. They had they they were going between Ford and Chevys. They even bought out Swan Racing, but they had the 30 car for one race before swapping it back to the obvious 44 car, as you can see right here. So that's basically their history. You can also watch, you know, the Icebergs video on Swan Racing. You can watch Black, Black Flags Matter. Black Flags Matter uh, video, Black Flags Matter video, Matters video on, I can't speak on, you know, um, on NY Racing, the car that they got their, that they got their whole car stolen. You have to, I believe he called it, dude, where's, I think he called the video, dude, where's my car? But then, I'm just going for the whole, uh, but that also around that time where they got their car stolen, John Conan was facing tax fraud charges and I believe was put in jail for a little bit I don't know I'm not 100% sure I don't want to speculate anything but man that team has gone through a lot but but then they came back 2018 like I said they ran the coke 600 with the premium war sports 7 car and the Tommy Baldwin racing top Tommy Baldwin race, racing car with their driver JJ Ailey they had in the past so yeah and then they fast forward to 2022. They come back. They make five starts, and then they disappear. And they said they were going to come back for this year and late last year at the at the Texas race and the Talladega race. But then Free F Racing, uh, the German um, sports car team, bought them out. But they have not made a start since buying them. And then again, John Conan's facing more charges. So I don't know. It's starting to sound like more likely he's a con artist, but I don't want to make any speculations. I don't want to because there might be some some sensitive people out there that might get offended if I if I say he's a straight up con artist. Because if you don't know, uh, John Conan, he's a he's a he's he was the first African American uh, car owner or one of them to to make it in the day twenty five hundred, I believe. Or qualify in the Daytona 500 outside of you know obviously um, Brad Doherty, Floyd Mayweather, and and what's what's the other guy's name? Um, trying to think of his name. Uh, you had Brad Doherty, um, Floyd Mayweather, and then uh, I can't think on the top of my head, but by the but uh, you know get, you get what I mean. You get the. Just what I'm trying to say, but I don't want to speculate anything because, uh, but because some people might call me, you know, racist or try and get my channel taken down if I if I speculate stuff. But you get what I'm trying to say here. But I'm just gonna leave it up to to you know innocent until proven guilty. I don't want to accuse him of anything, unless if it's really obvious, like you know, glory to God racing, Tim Vane's trash box of a team in the truck series don't know why they're still in the series they are a nonsense in the series but to me and my racing um doesn't look like glory to god racing let's just be real about that but i'm just gonna leave it at that and also i forgot to mention down right there you got some fake ex flame exhaust pipe right there so that's some really good detail love that so yeah if you want more detail about it, check out Last NASCAR's Fans Review. Last NASCAR's Fans Review on it. I'll link it in the description. 
And I'll even link, you know, diecast buffets and original Big Brides reviews as well. So if you're curious, you can check them out. And going back to this number right here, the number 44 car. The last time we got a 44 diecast was all the way back in, to, uh, ironically, 2016 uh, with Brian Scott. I think it was his uh, Twisted T car, or there was another one. I don't remember it, but it was with Richard Petty Motorsports. So that's been quite a while. So that's all I, all I got to say. Thank you guys so much and gals so much for checking out this review. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a like, thumbs up, subscribe, turn on the notification bell. Comment down below what you think about this diecast. Do you have it or not? So yeah, I'm going to try and get Josh Balicki's Ziggler car now. So wish me luck. But anyway, in the meantime, thank you so much for watching this review. Have a good day. Peace out.